Welcome again to the University of Nottingham. One of the most amazing statements of the Christian creed, not the formal creeds that are recited, but the body of belief, is that, there ha that the creation exists ex nihilo, that the creation exists and comes into existence out of nothing. It seems almost a contradiction in terms, and it's a deliberately provocative way of expressing a profound truth about monotheism. With me to discuss this is Dr. Simon Oliver. Simon, let's first of all talk about this strange phrase, creation or creatio ex nihilo. Okay, so creation out of nothing is is a doctrine of creation that is shared by the three Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. It's something that uh, the three traditions agree on, that when we talk about creation, we're not talking about God making the universe out of something else, that we have to talk about it as coming from nothing, which is a very, very strange way of thinking about it, particularly because it's not obviously verbatim biblical. So when we read the account of creation in the book of Genesis, what we have is a notion of God uh, ordering a formless void, um, of, of bringing into order some kind of pre-existing chaos. And that was actually a very common way of thinking about creation. It's the way that Plato considers creation in his cosmology, the Timaeus, where the demiurge takes a, a, a formless um, uh, receptacle of matter and orders the cosmos out of it. Um, but it also contradicts other ancient Greek understandings of creation. So Aristotle, Plato, Plato's pupil for example, thought that the universe has always existed. It's of endless time. So it doesn't have a moment of beginning. And so it, one wonders where does this notion of creation ex nihilo come from? Um, and when does it arise? And in fact, it's quite clear, I think, if one looks at the patristic tradition, the, the tradition of very early Christian theology in, in the first six or seven centuries, that the notion of God creating out of nothing arises very, very early indeed. And a lot of recent scholarship has wanted to connect it back to trends within the Hebrew scriptures as well, to see it as a thoroughly Jewish uh, doctrine coming out of the story of Israel. But it, it seems to me that they want to talk about God creating out of nothing really because of what they believe about God himself. So what they want to say about God is that if we are to talk about God's creative activity at all, we need to talk about God as not constrained in any way. And we need to talk about God's creative activity as distinct from events that happen within the created order. So, for example, when I create something in inverted commas, what I do is I take some pre-existing stuff and I mould it into something else. I take metal and I turn it into a car. I take clay, I turn it into a pot. There's a before and an after. But in some sense, I'm constrained by the material that I have. So I can't make a, a saw out of clay, for example. I couldn't really make a, a good bed out of a sheet of metal. So the possibilities are always constrain me with the material stuff there. And also, in some sense, the material stuff is, it stands alongside me, it's, it's equal to me. So when formulating creation, the notion of creation ex nihilo, the early theologians wanted to say that when God creates, God's not constrained in any way in the way that I am by making something out of material stuff. So God is supremely free and all-powerful and that there is nothing that stands alongside God that is, as it were, co-evil with God or equally primordial um, in the way that, you know, if God had matter alongside him, matter would be co-evil with God. So and, and matter would have to have the same ontological status as divinity. It, indeed, it would. So what they want to say is actually God creates even material stuff uh, and out of that material stuff then 
gives creation the ability to make itself, essentially, but sustains creation. And this is the, 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 the two key pins of creation ex nihilo, or one that uh, everything originates from God and creation has a beginning. There is a, a moment in time uh, when, when creation comes into existence. But also the other key pin of creation ex nihilo is that at every moment God sustains created being in existence. So this moment now as we're sat making this film is as much out of nothing as it were sustained in existence as the very first moment. Um, so it's this um, constant continual creation as they called it and the specific moment in time when creation begins. Now when we talk about creation beginning, that original moment, of course when Big Bang cosmology was first proposed in the 20th century, the, the phrase being coined by Fred Hoyle, the, the, the Cambridge cosmologist who, it's a derogatory term, he didn't believe in the Big Bang, but he, he, he coined this term the Big Bang for to describe the moment when the universe comes into existence. And now we know that cosmologists can trace the origins of the universe right back to an infinitesimal moment after the, the Big Bang. And so people saw in the Big Bang a connection with creation ex nihilo, the idea that the universe has a beginning and everyone thought, great, science and theology coming together again. But the, the difficulty with that notion is that science, it seems to me, will always talk about natural processes, one thing coming from another, one thing becoming another, uh, because that's what it does. It talks about the order of nature within the universe. But creation ex nihilo is not talking about one thing becoming another. It's talking about the nothingness and then something arising, which is not one thing becoming another. So when cosmologists talk about the Big Bang coming from nothing, in fact, it's not the same nothing that theologians talk mm -hmm. about. So cosmologists would talk, for example, about the Big Bang arising from the fluctuation of a quantum vacuum. Mm -hmm. Well, that is not nothing. Something is fluctuating and it's a quantum vacuum. When theologians talk about creation out of nothing, by nothing they really mean nothing. They do not mean simply a vacuum, because that's still a space. Uh, nothing can be said about nothing. Mm -hmm. But this is not a doctrine that's designed to tell us how God does it. It's not designed to explain the process. It's designed to draw limits to what we ought to say about God's creative activity. What it's saying to us is, when we talk about creation, we shouldn't talk about it as something coming from something else. We shouldn't talk about it as an act of making but we should talk about it as a supremely originate and utterly unique divine act that is utterly different from any creative activity within the order of the universe, but all that creative activity within the universe participates in this original creative act of God ex nihilo. When I read the phrase in medieval theologians, and of course it's, it can be found all the way back into the second century, it's mm. first found in the Shepherd of Hermas, mm. and it's clear that the Shepherd is there actually, ref the, the, the author of the, the, the Shepherd of Hermas, uh, writing sometime in the latter half of the second century, is actually re reflecting on the phrase in the, in the Johannine prologue. This phrase seems to be linking two separate beliefs, and, and, being, and being used as a sort of a, a theological, a piece of theological shorthand. The first is, is, is the statement that we are monotheists, mm -hmm. God is unique, utterly unique, yeah. because if there was anything that could be coeval, that would also be the big God and. Mm. But the second is the phrase that is often found, the non-mutual real relation God and the creation, God does not need us, but we absolutely need God. Yeah. And is it sometimes useful to, to talk about the non-mutual real relation to try and explore the, the notion of creation ex nihilo? Yes, and, and in fact, Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century talked about the relation between God and creation being real in creation, but not in God. 
and that reflects precisely this idea, going back to the Shepherd of Hermas, that um, that creation is wholly reliant at every moment on the divine creative act, on the divine gratuity, but in no sense is God reliant on or defined by his relation to creation. Um, and it, it is that non-mutuality, if you like, that's, that's what you're pointing to, that creation ex nihilo is trying to therefore mark the distinction between God and creation. How do we tell the difference? Um, and it is in terms precisely of creation coming from nothing and of God being eternal and utterly nothing standing alongside God. And this being radically monotheistic, which is why Judaism, Christianity and Islam hold this, this view of creation and why we can trace it back to Exodus and the great I am. And uh, my colleague at the University of Cambridge, Janet Soskis, has done a lot of work tracing the doctrine of creation ex nihilo back to the Jewish scriptures and the doctrine of God there, the radically monotheistic doctrine of God, mm -hmm. and seeing how creation ex nihilo is uh, an outworking of that scriptural priority of the uniqueness of God. Simon, thank you very much. Creation ex nihilo will continue as a theological shorthand to baffle students and to appear to be contradictory, ironic. But I hope this short introduction to its importance within Christian theology shows that while the shorthand may be awkward, it points to two of the most important aspects of the Judaic, Christian and Islamic view of both God and the existence we ourselves have. Thank you. <laughs>